So in this video, I'm gonna share 10 healthy habits that I think have really upgraded my life. Like I'm sharing little habits that have really made the difference for me personally. And some of these are a little bit more unconventional. Hey friends, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Jills and I help women step into their power, tap into their divine feminine and become their best self. So if that's something you wanna do, you should subscribe and stick around. So before I get into it, keep in mind that all of these habits are personal to me, things that have helped me. Um, they might not all work for you and that's totally okay, but I'm just being honest about the things that I feel like I've benefited from. So let's get into it. Okay, so the first habit is actually quite opposite to what some others recommend, but I really prefer and I feel like I get more benefit when I don't really have a morning routine, or at least I should say when I don't have an extensive morning routine. Here's the thing. I always feel my best. I always feel my happiest. I always feel the best in my body when I kind of just like get up and get going. Of course, I know everyone is different. Some people might love, you know, waking up and then meditating for an hour and then journaling for 30 minutes and then working out for an hour and then doing their cold plunge and yada, yada, yada. Doing all that stuff, like having an extended morning routine, it kind of just makes me feel a little bit exhausted before the day even begins. My morning routine is pretty simple. I'll tell you in detail what I do. I wake up and then I usually kind of lay in bed there for like maybe 10, 15 minutes. I don't like just like jumping out of bed right away. Um, sometimes to wake up my eyes, I'll read a few pages of a book, but nothing intense. And then I'll get up, go to the bathroom, brush my teeth. Then I will go downstairs, make breakfast. While I eat that breakfast, I'll usually go outside for a little bit in my backyard, maybe just five minutes, 10 minutes max. And then I will go upstairs and get ready for the day. Sometimes I walk my dogs in the morning after breakfast. It just depends on the day. But my morning routine is very simple, very straightforward. I kind of just like to get up and get going. I know some people will disagree and they love their three hour morning routine and that's great, I'm all for it. But for me, it just feels like I'm overcomplicating my morning because some guy on a podcast told me that I should. I realized over the years that everyone is different and no one knows more about your body than you. You know, like listening to the science and all that that can be incredibly beneficial, but it will only take you so far because it's ignoring the special uniqueness that is you. The next habit that really improved my health and wellness and my diet is whenever I go to get groceries for the week, I focus on shopping the perimeter of the grocery store. So here's what I mean. Usually at the grocery store, at least where I live, the perimeter of the grocery store is usually where they keep the more fresh food. Like that's where they tend to have the fruits and veggies. That's where they tend to have the fresh fish. That's where they have all that more natural fresh stuff that expires quicker. And one of the best things you can do to improve your health is to eat more fresh food. You know, foods that just are more natural as opposed to like very heavily processed. Like you will notice the difference. You will feel the difference. You will feel how much better you feel when you eat it diet that's filled with more like fresh natural food, either food that has grown on the earth or lived on the earth, as opposed to something that's just entirely created in some manufacturing facility somewhere. I definitely still get some stuff from the processed food aisles, like, you know, oatmeal, almond butter, jasmine rice. Sometimes I'll get like the healthy barbecue sauce that I love, but the focus, like 80% of my groceries come from that outer perimeter of the grocery store. And that's what 80% of my diet it is like if you eat this way it will literally change your life you will glow you will feel so much better you will have so much more energy your skin will start to glow of course we all know how our diet plays a monumental role in our health and our wellness like this is a non-negotiable everybody knows this but there are so many different diets out there and it can honestly get so overwhelming and confusing and i don't want to tell you what you like should and should not eat, like what kind of diet you should follow, because I do think that everyone is different. But if you follow this little rule, just shopping the outer perimeter of the grocery store, it's an easy way to start eating healthier without it being overwhelming. Another thing that I did in my wellness journey was cut out toxicity. So this means cutting out toxic environments and situations, cutting out toxic people, and also cutting out toxic products. So first of all, our health and wellness goes way deeper than just the food that we eat and the workouts that we do. 
It's also about the quality of our relationships and the quality of our life. Like you could be eating the most supreme diet and go to Pilates every day, but if your boyfriend is a toxic hot mess and you have to deal with that every single day, then you're probably not gonna feel that good. Or if your job every day feels like absolute misery to you, then you're probably not gonna feel too vibrantly healthy in your body. This kind of stuff, it affects our health, it affects our well being, and just because it's not food or a supplement or a workout, it's still incredibly important to how good you feel in your body. And that is what true wellness is. But also there are many, many toxic products out there that we are using on a daily basis, like cleaning products, makeup products, etc. Where if you use it maybe once or twice, totally not a big deal, right? But if you use the same toxic product every single day for a year straight, five years, 10 years, 20 years, it adds up and your body can potentially suffer for it. I know a lot of people get overwhelmed with the prospect of switching out all your toxic products to more non-toxic ones. I totally get it. This was something when, you know, I wanted to start living a more holistic lifestyle that was very overwhelming to me and something that I was kind of afraid to tackle. So I actually made a blog post for you guys that is just a big list, a big resource of all of the brands and products that I use that are more non-toxic. Like all of the household items, the cleaning products, the skincare, the makeup, laundry detergent, all that kind of stuff. I've been living this more holistic lifestyle for about seven years now, so I've already done quite a bit of digging. I've found the brands and the products that I really like. So I figured I would just make that little blog post for you guys. The link is down in the description below. And so you can just have it as just like a resource for when you want to start switching out your products. And this video is not sponsored. That blog post is not sponsored. So that whole list is just like brands, products that I genuinely use and recommend. Also keep in mind that you don't need to switch everything all at once. Like sometimes to make this process easier and what I recommend is when one product is starting to get low and run out, that's when you do the research and try to order, try to find a new product that is more non-toxic that you can try. Or you can look at my blog post and see what I use. But instead of just throwing everything out all at once and getting everything new all at once, which is wildly overwhelming and probably quite expensive, just do it one product at a time as one runs out. And after you do this for like a year or two years, you'll end up just naturally replacing everything. But seriously though, if you do wanna to switch to more holistic products, that blog post does have everything on there, at least all of the basics. So the link for that is in the description if you want to look at it or just save it as a resource. Okay, so moving on, the next habit to be my healthiest self is not taking too much wellness advice from men or not just like not having all of my wellness advice come from men. Men and women are different and we have our menstrual cycles. And just like I wouldn't recommend men to only take wellness advice from women, I don't think that women should only take wellness advice from men because they can never truly understand our experience and what it's like to be in our body and we can't ever truly understand theirs. And here's something that's absolutely wild. So you know all of those scientific studies out there that are referenced when it comes to health and wellness and how to be healthier, you know, we should do this to be healthy and not that. Even though as women we make up 50% of the population, most of the health research out there is actually conducted on men. And women were not required to be included at all in clinical research until 1993. And the reason for this is because it's just a little bit more difficult to study women's bodies and to identify cause and effect relationships because our hormones with our menstrual cycles are just a little bit more complex and they're always changing. So what they did is they just left out women entirely to make it a little bit, quote, easier to study. So then what happened is they were giving out health advice for the general population when it was only studied on men. And although this is definitely now changing and improving, which is great, health research is still more prominently focused on men. And that is just something that we have to keep in mind. Women are not small men. <laughs> We are different. We have different life experiences, different bodily experiences, different hormones, different needs. I wouldn't take marriage advice from someone who's never been married. I wouldn't take business advice from someone who's never had a business. And if I want to be a vibrantly healthy woman, I won't only have my advice come from just 
men. It doesn't make sense. We obviously, men and women, we are different, but we also have a lot of similarities. Of course, we are all still human beings at the end of the day. And it's not that I don't ever listen to any men. Like there's so many great male resources out there for like good health education who really want to help people. I'm just saying that I always make sure that I have at least some women's wellness advice too, coming straight from women. I honestly think this is relevant, not just for health, but also life advice, career advice, parenthood advice, kind of everything. And sometimes women just have different experiences than men. And we need to be able to honor this and only other women will truly be able to understand this. Another thing that I've done that's really improved my health is having more of a focus on more slower, more gentle workouts as opposed to like more intense ones. So for me, this usually means more like Pilates and nature walks over like, you know, those like CrossFit style boot camp kind of classes. Again, this is just me listening to my body. I feel my best when the majority of my workouts are more gentle. Now that doesn't mean that I don't enjoy like some good intense cardio sometimes. Like I go to these dance classes where it's basically just jumping around for an hour and a half straight and I wake up so sore the next day, but that is not the majority of my movement. The majority of my exercise is softer simply because my health is better when I do it this way. That's just what my body has liked and what my body's done well with. While those harder intense workouts can be really fun sometimes because they're getting your heart rate pumping and you're usually sweating a lot, which can sometimes feel really good. And it's pumping up your adrenaline and your cortisol. I found that doing these types of workouts and doing these workouts regularly actually just kind of made me feel more tired throughout the day. And it kind of made me feel like a less version of myself and weirdly, less connected to my body. I totally realize and understand that some people might have completely different experiences with this, but I realized once I reached like my mid twenties, my body started craving more softer workouts. I also don't like to work out right after waking up. I know there's some people who really prefer that, but for me, it just doesn't make me feel my best. I really prefer to wait a little bit until I can have like some real like water and food in me. I don't like like working out on an empty stomach. Okay, the next little habit is so tiny, but really helps me not feel overwhelmed by my phone or get addicted to my phone, which is an important part of wellness in today's day and age. And that is just simply turning my phone on black and white mode. It's something where you can really easily set up where if you hit the on button three times really quickly, it turns to black and white mode. I'll write down the instructions for how to do that in the description below because I know some people will ask, but having no color makes your phone so much more boring and it's so much less overstimulating. You don't find yourself wanting to be on it that long. It really, really does work. So I don't have black and white mode on all the time. It's something that I definitely have on every single night, a few hours before bed because it really helps you to wind down and not feel like you want to stay on your phone, which is helpful. But sometimes I will have it on throughout the entire day. If I feel like I need it, if I feel like I like really need to stay off my phone that day, then I'll put it in black and white mode. And my goodness, it helps so much. Definitely try it. So the next habit that not everyone will agree with, and that's totally okay, but something that makes me feel better is just waking up later and not trying to wake up at like 5 a.m. or 6 a.m. or something like that. Now I totally get that some people don't have a choice. Like they don't have a choice with what time they have to wake up. Trust me, I get it, I've been there myself, but I do have more flexibility in my days now and I don't have to wake up at 5 a.m. or 6 a.m. And I personally feel my best when I wake up sometime between like, 8 and 9 a.m. That's usually when I naturally want to wake up. I definitely get why some people love waking up early, but for me, it doesn't matter how many hours of sleep I get. If I wake up very early, I just don't enjoy the day as much. And I feel like I tend to run a little bit more on stress hormone. And I also tend to crave more food, like more junky food. And I don't know why, but that's just how I feel. I feel my healthiest when I wake up later. Don't let anyone convince you that your sleep schedule makes you unpredictable productive. We all have the same 24 hours in a day. It doesn't matter if you are working at 6 a.m. or 6 p.m. It's literally irrelevant. So I really prefer not to wake up when it's 
still dark out. Um, that just doesn't really feel that great to me. And honestly, it kind of gives me like the heebie-jeebies a little bit. Another little tiny habit that I've incorporated into my healthier lifestyle is just when I'm eating, just eating a little bit slower. Honestly, if I'm not paying attention sometimes, I can just like inhale my food. And my goodness, my husband, he's like, he could win an award for how quickly he could eat. And I find myself, like if I'm just eating with him, I find myself naturally starting to eat a little bit quicker. And I was like, oh no, <laughs> I don't think this is good. Slowing down your food and actually chewing your food can really, really help and really benefit you because one, not only does it help you to break down your food more and help you to digest it more and extract more nutrients from your food, but two, it also helps you to notice when you're full and you're less likely to overeat when you're a little bit more slow and intentional about your eating. And it also just helps you to savor your meal a little bit more, you know, experience a little bit more pleasure through your meals, kind of romanticize every single meal that you get, which is always a plus. Next habit is another little micro one, but can be so life-changing, especially if you are at home more like me, or if you work from home or you're a stay-at-home mom, and that is just changing out of your PJs first thing in the morning. The easiest thing to do to get your day in motion is literally just changing your clothes, getting out of your PJs and putting on real clothes. Even if it's just like an active wear set or something, it doesn't really matter, just something different. So I'll either change out of my PJs like right after I wake up or more commonly right after I finish my breakfast. Either is fine, it doesn't really matter, but it really just helps me feel a little bit more like ready and excited for the day. It's hard to move forward in your day with excitement and vibrancy when you're still in your PJs from the night before. And lastly, the last wellness habit is more of a mindset shift that completely changed the game for me and the way that I look at my body. And that is knowing my body is working for me not against me. When we get the flu and we get those unfortunate symptoms of a fever and chills and body aches and maybe a sore throat, it's very uncomfortable and we don't like it, but we know that our body is working for us, not against us. It's not giving us a fever to hurt us. It's giving us a fever to heal us. But how our body does one thing is how it does everything. Our body is always trying to help us and to heal us. Every time we get a zit, it's our body trying to help us, trying to heal us. Every time we get bloated, it's our body trying to help us. Every time we get a weird rash on our arm, it's our body trying to help us. Every time we get this, you know, crazy fatigue, it's our body actually trying to help us, trying to tell us and encourage us to slow down. Our body is always working for us not against us. When I developed an autoimmune disease many years ago, you know, a lot of people say that autoimmune diseases are the body attacking itself. Now, I personally do not believe that to be true. We are all entitled to our own beliefs and opinions, but I do not believe that to be true. I believe that the body is always working to heal you. And I think that the reason why I was able to heal from that autoimmune disease and move past it is because I believe that. Everything that your body does, it's intentional, it's purposeful, it's at least trying to help you. And maybe sometimes those things are a little bit annoying, but if we are able to look at it differently and realize that our body is always trying to help us, at least trying to heal us, it's trying to work through whatever we're going through, then we can start to look at our body completely differently. We can have so much more love and compassion for our body. And that right there will change the wellness game for you. That is it. If you haven't seen this video, life-changing healthy habits for women, I highly recommend you go check it out. If you like the type of stuff that's in this video, you're definitely gonna wanna go watch that one as well. So I'll see you over there or I'll see you next time in my next video. Thank you so much for watching and staying until the very end. I appreciate you. Bye.